communion. Um, there's a story that happens during this time that to me is one of those uh, Simeon, the uh, Syrian. I, I love this story because it's unexpected. It's unannounced. It's unwanted. It's not... It's not a place we, any of us, would choose to be. You know, in the scriptures, there's this one character, and I want to be him. We would not choose this. So uh, Simeon's walking through the crowd, and he's going into Jerusalem. And imagine a situation where there's a, a parade or a, a crowd building and everything else. And as you're going into town to, to pick up your groceries or to uh, get your food, or maybe you're going to buy your sin offering because it's a Passover and you want to bless your family, bless your friends. Maybe in the midst of all that, as you're going into town, you hear an uproar, screaming, ranting, raving, spitting, cursing. What is that? I can remember, I, re I think we all remember the riots going on in Portland and just that demonstration, that screaming, that yelling, that anger and everything else going on. And it was a curiosity. I, at times I didn't turn off the TV because I wanted to see what are you doing? What are you saying? What's going on? And so Simeon, in this similar thing, I think makes his way through the crowd and pokes up and, and looks through a couple of shoulders and unknown to him, a Roman soldier grabs him. Get over there. Now the Romans had a right to drag you out and put you to work for one mile. For one mile, you will carry my armor. For one mile, you will be my sword bearer. For one mile, you are going to go with me. And I don't owe you a thing. So they pulled Simeon out and they threw him at the base of a cross. Huh? And he was behind Jesus. And that's significant to me. He was behind Jesus. He wasn't in front pulling it forward. He was behind Jesus going at the pace and the direction Jesus was going. He did not, this is not where he wanted to be. I want to go into town. I don't want to be here. Well, you're in service to me now, the Roman soldier says. And if Simeon had protested, this Roman soldier could have kicked, killed him right then and there. So Simeon grabs onto the cross to help this man he does not know. Might have heard of, maybe. But he wasn't there for this purpose. And as they're going along, sweat, blood, is falling on Simeon. They're throwing rocks at him. They're spitting at him. Somebody probably runs out and smacks him across the head. Poof! That was funny. You see what I did? There's all these things going on. The screaming and the yelling is awful. And, and maybe he hears a few grunts from Jesus. But he doesn't hear protests. He doesn't hear Jesus saying, Stop! Instead, he hears Jesus working hard to pull this cross forward, and he assists them. As they go up the hill, as they go towards this place, Simeon recognizes the place that they're going to. He's going to die. This is our communion. This is our sacrifice, and we get to walk that path. Would you choose it? No. No. Um, so, you know... Frank, I'm going to make you a really powerful Christian, but you're going to have to be an alcoholic for 25 years. No. That is not a good idea. That's just, that's stupid. And it worked out. I had no idea it would work out, but it worked out. Amen. And in the midst of doing that, you're going to be able to go back and help others. In the midst of everything that you're going to go through, the, the blood and the sweat and the anger and the you're going to be able to help others. But Jesus, I don't want to go this way. Get behind me. I will lead the way and we will go. But when we get there, I have to die. And in my death, I will save your life. But why? Because I love you. The one message out of all of this that happens is, I love you. It's not, I love you, corporate. It's not, I love you, people that do this and this and this, it's no, I love you. Where you are, what you are, how you are, I love you. The only thing I ask you is to grab the back of this cross and follow me where I'm going. I don't want to. Yeah, you do. Because where we're going is a whole lot better than where you are. Where you're going, where we're going with Christ is going to be a whole lot better than where we stand as men, as women. 
this is a better place to go, do you want to be there? Yes, I do. So in this communion, the other part of it is, the story, uh, the story of Simeon is in Matthew 27, verse 27 through 32. I will, if you want to look up the story, that's where you can find it. But in Mark 15, uh, verse 21, Simeon's sons and his wife are mentioned. And, you know, he hadn't been mentioned in the Bible up until that point in time. It wasn't like a great prophet of God came forward and pulled the cross. He wasn't mentioned. There's just this guy who happens to be in town. But after this moment of the communion, his family's mentioned. And Paul says, um, they're, again, they're again mentioned when Paul sends greetings to the sons, Rufus and Alexander, and to the mother too. And Paul calls, says of his mother, who has been a mother to me as well. So Simeon not only took a communion time with Christ, but his wife, the mother of Rufus and Alexander, took time with Paul and mothered Paul along. Their family legacy is significant because it changed at the moment of carrying the cross. So is yours. The significance of what you are comes at the moment you start carrying the cross. And it not only is for you, but it's for your family. It's not only for you, but it's for those that you touch, you bless, you give honor and praise, give prayer to. Um, it's funny, if you start to pray for someone, you'll start to hurt and have feelings for them. If there's someone that you've cast off, start praying for them. Start giving them a moment of your time. And then that moment will become two moments. and It'll become a visit. It'll become a conversation. That's the purposing of Easter in our lives, that we give life to those that have been broken. So join me in prayer. Father God, as we come to this communion, as we come to a time where we take the body of Christ and we drink his blood, we do it in remembrance of the fact that you love us individually. That every time we turn back and run to you, that you greet us on the road, you wrap your arms around us, you kiss us, and you say, let us prepare a feast, for my son has returned. Lord, each and every time, you will never leave us nor forsake us, and you have never, ever proven yourself unworthy. So we turn back to you today. We repent of our nature, of our ego, of our selfishness, of our self-disdain, asking that we see and love ourselves and others through your eyes. Lord, let this be a day of renewal, a day of new purposing, and a day in which we are willing to hold the cross and to follow you wherever you would lead. Your name, your power, your authority, and your love be lifted on high, that we might bow down to the King of kings and Lord of lords. Have your way with us. In Jesus' name, amen.